<sighs> Welcome to another episode of Zero Ales and Hockey Tales with Wally. And today, I'm so excited to have on, out of the blue, a 32-year-old from Doncaster, England. His hockey journey has taken him to England, Scotland, Australia, and he is a legend there in Scotland with the Glasgow Brayhead clan and has become a champion and legend since they didn't ask him back, those punks. Now he's in the castle with the Leeds Knights just running amok of the place. He had 113 points and 42 goals, folks. And in cup play, added another 41 points, folks. So if my math is right, that is 154 points this season. And, um, well, he has led the team to a championship of the NIHL. Welcome to the shed, Matthew Haywood. Welcome back. Yeah, thanks for having me back. So you got the kids with you today, eh? I've done the juggling act in the shed. (laughs) Yeah, spur of the moment interview, wasn't it? But um, really was. <laughs> I just put it on my laptop. Put it on my laptop over here. She's working away. Hi, what's your name? Say hi. <laughs> hi. <laughs> this is Maddie. Is Dad getting ready for a big weekend then? Daddy going to leave this weekend? Yeah. <laughs> she, she thinks she, she thinks you're my brother. Oh, <laughs> um, so I get into how we know each other. This is as spur of the moment as a shed trip has gotten ever. I just wrote to you and I said, You got an hour because I'm good with work right now for an hour. And we've been trying to set up a talk for a couple weeks now, right? Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. The research team did not get hot before this, folks. This is, I guess, I haven't challenged myself in a while, right? We'll see if I'm actually good at this with no notes, right? Uh, yeah well it's only been 200 episodes you've done so we'll see if you, uh, we're nearly at 300 <laughs> oh. <laughs> issues folks healthy issues i got right <laughs> you know that you're running that wall space behind you there yeah i'm running out i'm gonna have to go uh lower i think i think i'm gonna have to go down a level now need a new um, shed maybe no, I don't need a new shed. This is perfect for me. Um, but thank you, Lee Freeman, for uh, making this masterpiece behind me with all the posters of the shed guys. And uh, Sean Collins for the website maker guy. And he's the clothes maker guy. He ships it out. So that's available at aleshockeytails.com. And he helps me set up all these raffles to help people, which we just uh, sent 138 pounds to Rich Bateman's family for the raffle I just had. So thank you, shed family. Right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, so you got a big weekend playoff weekend right yeah I haven't been to many of those I don't think I've <laughs> ever been I don't think I've ever been to Coventry as a uh, as a player I went there when I was the league below playing in the Sunday kind of national championship game but I've never actually been to Coventry as a as, as a player a, so, league, Cove- yeah. so the elite league final weekend is in Nottingham every year and yeah. the second league is always in Coventry. Yeah, just I think because they're both very neutral. Like the the second league, the NIHL is very southern. Okay. I know they've they've got them up since since having Leeds, it's got obviously a little bit more northern. But um, it's it's generally like London area kind of teams with a few obviously Sheffield. Where is Leeds? And now whole Leeds. It's it's like an hour north of Sheffield. Um, and you live in Sheffield, right? That's where you're from, kind of? I'm from Doncaster, which is kind of Sheffield, but I live, I still live up in Glasgow, so I drive down. Every How far Friday is that? Then... Depends if I have a kid in the car or not. I can do it in about three, just over three when I've got no kids, but if I've got kids and we have to stop and stuff. Then I yeah, have you to, do. Uh, I'm a for before you, you know. So do you not practice all week, and then you just show up for the weekends and run a muck? No, I well, I practice Fridays. There was a time where about six weeks I didn't practice for a while because we had loads of Friday games, like three and threes, because of the cup. Um, and we got the new one out one hour import left to go to Belfast, and we got the second the hour lower import Jake uh, Witowski and. I think it was like five, six weeks before I even practiced with him, but I played like 10, 15 games with him. That's hockey, though, when so, you don't have to practice. You so just weird. play games. That's fun. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 
So, well, I'm at a stage now where practice just makes probably just makes me worse. So, <laughs> so I get it now. We know each other though. So, um, well, your fans have kept me up to date with your successes this year. After your initial shed trip, I find it very cool how it connects me with people. Uh, but people let me know when you're running amok. So I just heard you had three goals and two assists in the game the other day. <laughs> yeah, well, it's all from the chocolate. I, I, I just have to dodge chocolate now every time we win. It's crazy. Right. So, okay. I don't, so I don't have confirmation that this is because of the shed. Is though what happened was... I had these fans letting me know how you're doing and talking about how you're a shed guy and showing me how good you're doing. And then they sent me a video and it w- it they tagged me in it and they said winning is fun. Um fun is fun. And then that then a few weeks later out out of nowhere, right? I get a video saying we just had a chocolate storm in Leeds. <laughs> and I don't know if that's because of me and the shed or not. I like to think so, but I also I think I think it's something they've done for a little while. Actually, I don't know if it's because of what you kind of did with around Sheffield. Remember when you did that with Sheffield? And, well, it's Manchester stuff. that's yeah. been a chocolatey storm this season, right? Yeah. But, um, that yeah. really caught on, really caught fire there in Manchester. But Cardiff was like yeah. that last season's like that was our thing, and then Fournier was getting it, and then he had to, he headed out of town. Um, so then the chocolate kind of stopped until we just got some throw on the ice for Franny and my gals, <laughs> my under nine gals. So thanks. Yeah. Shit, Emily, that's cool. <laughs> yeah. I think they did. I know, I know they brought quite a lot. Of, uh, fans brought quite a lot of chocolate and sweets last year to the team, but I'm not sure. I honestly don't really know, but. So this did, has been happening in Leeds since last year. I think so. Yeah. Not as much, not as much as what it is now, but at the end of the season, the last game of the year, league game of the year, there was hundreds and they all had like notes on for, specific guys and stuff and we we're all reading them in the dress room so it's quite so nice. it is just like manchester they are doing it yeah, yeah, the shed yeah, yeah well, shed that's... head head of marketing shed guy jake yeah. he's the one that puts the <laughs> notes on and who they're for and they must have got it from jake this has to be because yeah. of the shed somebody yeah. please uh, confirm can... with me please i really need <laughs> give to yourself know. Give me... yeah you gotta give yourself some credit there then. i'd like to put that feather in my cap but i need someone to let me know i can <laughs> you know <laughs> I think it's so fun though. When I saw where the chocolate was getting thrown from, though, it was the same seats as where the people sent me the video that said winning is fun a few weeks earlier. So it has to be yeah. the same people. And they know that fun so is got, fun yeah. and they know winning is fun. And I like their attitude. <laughs> fun is winning, winning is fun. And scoring is fun, right? And I, I have this conversation. Yeah with people like in minor hockey and stuff and where their kids should be. And everybody thinks they need to be at the highest level. But when you're the best player on the ice, it, hockey is so much more fun than like the worst part for me in my career was in the AHL playing by two shifts a game. And I hated hockey. Um, I think running a muck is way more fun and you must be having a lot of fun putting up 144 <laughs> points. <laughs> Well, I uh, made a career out of chasing icings down and things, so um, it so is, it's, yeah, it's quite nice to see. The, it's quite nice to see the other side, but um, I'm a, I'm not I'm not alone in scoring though on this team. I, I think we've got like three three or four or three guys over 100 points. One guy's the top point scorer in the league, and who's that? Yeah, it's uh, Kieran Brown. You've probably heard of him. He's a good a good little player. Yeah, so he's, um, uh, he's a pretty swell player so i wonder why he's in leeds and not in the elite league or just maybe that's by choice uh i think it's like he's only he's only 21 22 like he's not like he's not, people think he's a lot older than what he is because of the way he plays and stuff um i think it's i think he signed a two-year last year and i think it's actually probably good for his development because he was with the steelers so he's, he's seen it and he's played quite like a handful of games sat on the bench, blah, 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 played a few shifts. But he and must he be having more was... fun doing that than yeah. playing a couple shifts in the, the Elite League, right? He's well, he's probably, probably better progressing better, better than the kids sitting there not playing. Exactly, exactly. And he's getting put in all these positions like power play, penalty kill, and he's kind of obviously playing as much as he can, which is which is great for him, uh, mm-hmm. especially – he doesn't want to go up and have to relearn the game. I guess kind of felt like what I did. I I went up at nineteen and I, I felt like I had to re, re like assess what I was as a player and and obviously I took the British route and I was 
the PK or <laughs> yeah, and all that sort of stuff. You Brits are that. a lot of PKers, third, fourth line, yeah. buck it up. But you guys are the best teammates in hockey. Like man, it's <laughs> you are though. Like you guys, the Brits I played with, they never complained about ice time. They never complained about the role. Whenever they were called upon, they were ready to rock. That's just how it was. Yeah, imagine the national team trying to pick the P- a couple of PK units on a national team. <laughs> yeah, everybody's a PK on that team. <laughs> I guess Liam Kirk's changing that. I actually was kind of yes. shocked, though, when the research team had about three seconds before we started. Um, you haven't played on Team GB as much as I would have thought after playing against you, and you were always the captain and leader of Greyhead. I would have thought you'd been on the national team more. Yeah, I, I went once, and then I was supposed to go to the Olympic qualifiers in the February or something around Christmas time. Anyway, the following year, but I, the day before I went, I broke. I got took a slap shot to the face, broke my jaw, okay. and then yeah, I feel like it took me a while to recover from that. To be fair, even in all honesty, I don't think I was the same player from. Probably Injuries around the can year, maybe. change your mindset a bit, right? You just yeah. don't. You don't feel same like after my knee coming back on the ice like i was so confident before that knee injury i felt like i could kind of do whatever i wanted in germany and then when i came back it just i just wasn't the same (laughs) i think it's just natural though isn't it like i don't know if it's like confidence in like i obviously knew i probably wasn't going to take another slap shot to the face touch wood hope i don't get one this weekend but um (laughs) but you know like it's just just (laughs) yeah i uh just putting yourself in those positions where you've never thought about that happening before. Now yeah. it's even just like a tiniest bit in your mind. And you, maybe I was kind of standoff. But... Yeah. You pull up a bit. It was kind of with my yeah. knee, right? Like I had missed a game in 10 years. I kind of felt invisible, invincible that like I couldn't get hurt until I did get hurt and miss a whole year. And then all of a sudden you're a little more timid the way you go into yeah. things. Yeah. It's, it could only be that 1%, but like, it's, in, maybe they say like it you that like, matters. Like, yeah exactly like ignorance of youth where you don't understand that like you can actually really hurt yourself and you just do stuff you don't you would never do as a 30 plus year old you know what i mean yeah like i look yeah. around my team right now on the average age is if you take me and sammy zajak out who are the oldest two uh, i think the average age goes to like 20 yeah and it's, it's a young now, league eh that's and young it's now tw- 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 21 22 <laughs> So you, you must like, find it interesting yeah. going out. They must just be out there just a given her. And you're probably playing old man smarter. <laughs> just knowing yeah. where to be. <laughs> I just let everybody else do my running around for me now. Yeah, you know, you know what it's like. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. F three. <laughs> I was F three a lot. <laughs> yeah. I've been F three quite a lot in my career. Yeah. I'm, I'm not really an F one type confident. of a guy. If I'm not carrying no. it over the blue line. I'm not F1. Yeah. <laughs> if I am F1, there's something wrong. Like yeah. I've, this couple of people have been changed or something. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. You didn't look like an idiot being F1 when you, you, you're me. Like, I would go in on a yeah. smooth skate and D-man on with that big ice, yeah. and they'd just shimmy shake me, and I would look so <laughs> silly being F1. I'd rather be F3. <laughs> That's when you just trap. Yeah. If I'm F1, we just trap. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're pulling out, boys. <laughs> we'll, get um, we'll get him on our blue line. We'll get him on our blue line. That's right. And uh, yeah, here. So I always say shed guys know shed guys. And that's how this whole thing works is like the good dudes know the good dudes. You know what I found cool was um, when, well, I personally, for people to hear this, is I think Glasgow got exactly what they deserved this year you don't let a guy go like you that wants to come back you don't let your like living legend that's only 32 years old leave just because you get a new coach i think that guy i think what happened you know it all has been quite the year up there but um deco turns it around he gets them to the playoffs very proud of him Uh, as a rookie coach that was really cool to see a shed guy turn a team around but when they when you let a guy go like you that um i just don't think you went doing stuff like that and uh what do i know though right they didn't have a very they did make the playoffs once dicko took over though right uh yeah. but what i thought was neat when i say shed guys no shed guys is when that all went down chris frank reached out to me and said hey tell your boy dixon that if he wants to get the fans back and he wants to get the purple army back he needs to bring woody back 
<laughs> and for one of yeah, your former well, teammates to reach out to me to try and make that happen or like to put that in Deco's ear, emotion. like shed guys, no shed guys. And I think that's pretty neat. And that's why I always wanted to have you back on as soon as Frankie wrote to me. <laughs> so Yeah. Thank you. Well, he's one of, he's one of life's good guys, Chris Frank. Unless he's yeah. on the ice against you, unless he's on the other yeah, team well, on been... the ice, then he's a psycho. <laughs> yeah. I, I first met Frankie. Obviously, I played against him when he played for Cardiff, Sheffield. So, but I first actually met him in Australia. He was playing for Melbourne when I was playing for Adelaide. Oh, and a uh, menace out there. <laughs> he was suspended because you played two games to get to the same yeah, team. Yeah, no the way. The travels, the travels so crazy. He was suspended on the Saturday, and obviously Australia. So you all go out on the Saturday night, and then I walked in the rink on the Sunday, and I walked past him, and I was like, oh. I'm like, I got to say something to him because he might kill me out there. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> and uh, and I was like, oh, I hope you're as hungover as I am. He's like, oh, yeah, man, I'm, I'm absolutely right. I'm done but, in. But then yeah. once he gets a uh, stick in his hands and he gets skates on his yeah. feet, then like that one eye just goes a little bit crooked. And you're like, whoa, <laughs> look at you. <laughs> and then years later, obviously, when he played for the clan, we spoke about it. And he was like, oh, yeah, you asked me if I was hungover, but I wasn't hungover. Oh, but I just wanted to act cool. Because <laughs> anyway, <laughs> I was like, all oh, right. Yeah, me trying too. Trying to fit yeah, in. <laughs> <laughs> um, I got to know Frankie at Western Michigan University. I was like one of his mentors, oh, okay. you know. I was a senior when he was yeah. a freshman. And uh, the coach used to make us do one-on-ones against each other every time and would tell him to kill me. Um, so that was fun, fun times, right? Oh, he was no, Frank no. the Tank at university, and he would just crush people. Um, and oh, for some it. reason, the coach wanted him to go against me, which in practice, which to me seems strange. But Doesn't he have that hit that's gone viral where he kind of hits the guy in the, the corner? Guy. Yeah, yeah against Michigan. Like four flips. I was playing in that uh-huh. game. No, the guy, like, goes straight backwards in the air, like flies backwards right. in the yeah, air. Yeah, yeah. And I think he, like it was, he was, he was hit very hard that game. And yeah. I was watching, I mean, that I was think... the hardest hit I've ever seen in my life. Yeah, me too. You can tell how, even on, on, a, on a video, you can see how hard it is. I mean, I've been in, I've been on the end of a couple of Frankie hits and they're not good, but they're nothing like that one was. No, that guy was skating up the ice and he was skating down the ice. <laughs> <laughs> He was the best guy. He was the best player at my testimonial, though, Chris Frank. I'll give him that. I'll, I'll give him that. Was honor. he roughing it up out there? He didn't make the eye go crooked out at your testimonial, did he? No, he was all he was all skill. Was he? He had the, yeah, he always he was, had the skill. He had the skis. Remember the skis we used to do on, on breakaways and stuff? On in Juice Boy, you used to do the skiing from side to side. Oh, is he would do that for you. I, I saw you doing that through the chocolate. Yeah. Is oh, that what you're you talking about? It's the video I got sent, they're like, look at this shed guy, look at all the chocolate, and you were skiing down the yeah. ice. <laughs> yeah, well, where do you think I got it from? I tell you, though, it's it really isn't that big of a world in the shed. Like, okay. the videos I get sent, I feel like I'm in the UK almost every weekend. <laughs> well, it's well, you know, it's the, you know, it's the big, it's the old big blue tent, right? Well, that's what all I have that written down. We haven't even talked about that. Yeah. Like, so it's the, the big blue tent, folks sad day when they take it down in Cardiff Bay, but you know what? It's been resurrected in Leeds, England. And when I found out that's the big blue tent, I, I just had such a shine for the Leeds Knights, you know, it's, it's big it's, fan. It's, it's, yeah. It's not, it's definitely been done up since the big blue tent. It looks like <laughs> a proper bar. No, it looks surreal. It looks really yeah. well built again, but like, <laughs> like it's, it's like, it's perfect. Yeah, it's beautiful, it and it's the, especially for that league. It's it's it is actually the perfect size. It, it is good. quite a few and fans that, showing that, up too, and a lot of chocolate. I think we should get it carried yeah. away now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, yeah, we've been getting two thousand fans for the past two, three months. Like it's great since it's, since Christmas. It's, and uh, you know what it's like, and like when it what it was like in Cardiff with a big blue tent, how loud it was and stuff. It was exactly the same. That's so cool. That's great. To yeah. That's hockey. The only difference is there's not many six foot five uh, guys trying to kill you. Right. Yeah. Not they're as many monsters bit, in little, the castle. Yeah. They're a <laughs> little, bit, little bit small. It must have a moat around the castle. <laughs> to <laughs> not let the big guys in like they did in the big yeah. blue tent. They're like circus oh, freaks. You get big Doug Clarkson out there. <laughs> oh, I remember those games. Remember when we had that really tough team in Glasgow with. Um, Yes, we had like four, 
I had the group chat with them, right? I had the group chat. That was 2014-15. Yeah, and I was school guys with uh, Matt Keith and Stefan Myers as well, and Scott Pitt, and they were all six foot two as well. Like, why? And like Stefan Meyer, like he he played that straightforward type of a game too. Like he wasn't like he wasn't all razzle dazzle. He was going to take her to the net. (laughs) (laughs) I think he's a fighter in the NHL. So, So, um. He's got a good uh, YouTube highlight video if you want to want to watch. Oh yeah! That. Wow, he's, he's a dandy. Not, I really like that fella. He's not afraid to show you that highlight <laughs> video. <laughs> <laughs> Once you get a few drinks in him, he'll show you that video. Oh, it's cool! All the YouTube stuff that's out there. I found some. I've I have found some stuff I had never seen. I didn't know there was footage of like the Lansu Cannibals two thousand seven eight. I did not know that there was like a major league remake from the Daytona beach bombers of Ohio that I've found recently from 2006, <laughs> seven. It's pretty cool. When you find some old stuff that's been made, you oh, know, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. memory lane. I bet you're pretty, uh, yeah. I bet you're pretty thankful that it wasn't around though too much <laughs> back then. <laughs> well, it's crazy nowadays. How much stuff is out there of the pictures and videos oh. and stuff, right? It's a different game. It's a different game now. It's a different world all these phones and stuff right yeah it is. okay so the castle the toilets work the showers had drain uh yeah way better than the big blue tent wild eh i've never yeah. i can't picture it uh the big blue tent we'd have six inches of water in the shower that never left yeah yeah i remember that i remember that actually the showers in the big blue tent themselves were okay the drainage was the issue. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. They were. They at least had hot <laughs> it water. Like, it's not like going to Coventry. You guys won't have hot water all weekend. <laughs> yeah. I mean, that's a good point. Although, I don't know what room. How does Coventry get. not have hot water in the arena? I don't get it. Every time, th- there was never hot water for the showers. Is that on purpose to piss us off after a game? Well, Sorry well, for winning again. Them. Yeah, you, you probably beat them more than we did, though. So we had quite a lot of hot water when... <laughs> <laughs> they let you guys have it. <laughs> yeah, they probably turned it off because you beat them all the time. Oh. <laughs> so, what is going on here? So, you play in Coventry this weekend? Yeah, it's the same format as the Elite League. So, who do you play? Uh, we play Pelford, which is uh, they're close to Coventry, like it's a, it's a Birmingham kind of area team in the semis. The other semis is Sheffield against uh, London. <laughs> but London then the, instead of like called London, yeah, they're out Essex way. They kind of where Batchy's, you know, you know, Batchy is kind of where he's from. Area. Spe- speaking of Batchy, um, my we're making a testimonial jersey that I can raffle off to help pay for flights for all the shed guys going over there. Um, so my uh, Walton 18 Josh Batch testimonial jersey. We're going to put up a raffle, and it's also sponsored by Two Ales and Hockey Tales. So there's a Two Ales and Hockey Tales logo on the back if you win it, folks. So we're going to have that raffle and, like, probably the morning of the testimonial, right? That'd be cool. And we'll see how much money we can raise for old Batchy, right? Yeah, hopefully. That's going to be a time. May 27th, folks. Don't forget your chocolate for my under nine gals, too, right? (laughs) It's amazing how much chocolate's been thrown around the world because of this stuff, you know? I know, I know. Hockey players' teeth are bad enough anyway, you know? Yeah. I'm. Su- why wouldn't this, <clears throat> if, if they ever found out why it was happening, maybe they'd sponsor me, right? Maybe I'd get paid to do this in chocolate or something. Yeah, you could have a two-story shed by the end of it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, anyways, so what else? Uh, so you play Telford. They, do they still have that Silverthorn guy? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's injured. He's been out. For, I think he. I was talking. We were talking to him. He's got hip issues. I think he needs a replacement hip or something. But um, oh, yeah, they got him. He's from uh, just down the road. Eh? He's from thirty minutes down the road here in Port oh, yeah. yeah, I played against yeah, his brother a lot. The goalie. He that part. Yeah, his brother player. beat me, me in the coast finals. Then he went to the second league in Germany and would stop my shots all the time. What a punk. <laughs> I hate I hate goalies like the stubby shots and that. Yeah, they're the worst. <laughs> <laughs> what do you do on your power well, play? Are you the bumper guy? Are you the net front guy? Or are you the half full guy? Uh kind of a net front slash low guy. Yeah. At the minute. But I was top. I was at the top, but then I think they realized my shots don't really reach the net. <laughs> so they kind of 
<laughs> so they let the young boys do that. Mm. Just, just try not to hit me. You just muck it shoot. up around the net. I could see you excelling yeah, at that. Yeah, yeah. I can't, I'm off to the side more than in front, you know, looking busy. I think we got sidetracked, though. We were talking about your tough team from Brayhead 2014-15 oh, yeah. and, uh, and the big blue tent. And, like, those hockey matches, like, you had Frankie, Fitzy, you know, all the fellas, and then you would come in and – um, all our big boys, everybody was ready to rock those games, weren't they? <laughs> yeah, sorry, my dog just started eating a, a donut that we left on the floor. That's <laughs> in the shopping bag. Um, well, you're doing great at juggling everything. Way to go. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> I, uh, yeah, I remember I remember one game, uh, we had Chris Frank, uh, Obviously, Fritzy Saltz, and uh, we had Jeff Smith too. You know, I remember Jeff Smith, the tall guy who's played the hole as well, six foot four. I don't think five. I do know who that is. But we, I remember there's like in the first period, like four or five guys got kicked out <laughs> early. I think Frankie high stick uh, Andrew Lord in the face. As well. He tried, he was going to cross check me in the face too. Like the first time I skated by him to say, like, Hey, buddy, I haven't seen you since college. So I gave him a whack on the back of the legs. And he turned around to cross check me in the face. I'm like, Frankie, I was just saying hello with a slash. <laughs> like, relax. Later that game, I did try to crush his testicle because I knew he didn't wear a jock. Fun fact for the folk. Fun fact, right? He didn't wear a jock. Oh, I didn't know that. I wish I'd have known that a few years ago. I knew that when we played against each other, and that's why I gave him a stick lift right between the legs after a whistle. And I just wanted to see if he would actually punch me. I had to test out if he was actually psychotic and was going to cross check me in the face. And I found out at that moment when I tried to crush his testicle that he would not actually hurt me. <laughs> I knew you loved me, it's Frankie. Dangerous. <laughs> it's a dangerous game. It's a it dangerous wasn't, way of it, it was really dangerous. It was probably the most vulnerable I put myself all season, but I needed to know. <laughs> <laughs> uh so how how did you score so you had a bunch of cup points too but you had 42 regular season goals how you scored most of these uh i think it's a combined height of half the net I'm, I'm not afraid to put um sorry i'm just getting a cup of tea made for me here oh she's um, making you a cup of tea eh? <laughs> <laughs> um okay um yeah i think oh i don't even couldn't even tell you i Couple tap ins, couple tips. <laughs> so, are you playing with that Kieran Brown fellow? Are you on the same line? No, no. Well, it was at the start, but then um, trying to we had make, trying to make it even. Two lines. We had a. <laughs> we got we. To, to be fair, we've got a. I think that's what's our our uh, most powerful thing is we've got three good lines in this league. You know, like three lines that can score. Uh, we've got two two. Two solid. Um, we've got Kieran and Cole Shooter. I don't know if you played against Cole. I've heard that name. I think you might, might have been playing for Sheffield when, when you were around. I think it um, was after me he did. But yeah, I know that name. The, uh, they're playing with our import, um, Zach Brooks. And then Matt, Matt Cowell that dropped down from the Elite League from Dundee. He, he was in Glasgow with me and then he went to Guildford. And then he was done at the start of this year. And then he dropped down around Christmas time, just before. So I've been playing with him and the uh, the second import we've got. So they, they guys, they can You got two good lines. Fly. Yeah. Yeah, they can fly and I just kind of get myself. Like you said, old man smart, just trying to get myself in the right spot. <laughs> That's right. Get open after you. <laughs> 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 yeah, in the big blue tent and like those big ice games like Sheffield and whatnot, I had to I had to read the play because I ain't chasing those young punks around no more, you know, not with one leg. No, they're, <laughs> no, they're too fast now. Oh. They're all too fast. I mean, yeah. I'll get going once once a game, maybe I'll, I'll be flying. And, I, and if they don't pass to me, then, then it's their own fault. <laughs> yeah, I'm not I'm going, not going fast again. again. <laughs> <laughs> I do know what you mean. <laughs> Yeah. So um, I need a full I need a full, need a full zone of crossovers just to get myself just, going. <laughs> um. So I did. I don't know if I would have asked you this in episode the first time we chatted, but why do you wear number eleven? Um, I just kind of got that given to me when I was when I first played. It was my first real number that 
I got signed to in the under tens, and then you just had it ever since under ten. There's no reason for it. You just liked it. Just, just I. It was always available. So right. Yeah. It's always nice when your number's available. That's for sure. Yeah. Um. So if you guys win it all this weekend. I wonder what you'd get into. Where would people go out and cut? Would you go out in Coventry or would you head back no, to Leeds? We'd head back to Leeds. We're not. We're not. Um. We're not staying over this weekend. We're traveling both days. It's only like two hours on the bus. Oh really? Um, so you're gonna play yeah. on the Saturday? Yeah. Well, you're, you're, so you meet in Leeds. You're gonna bus to the game, play, and then bus back to Leeds. Yes. Hmm. If we obviously win independent. On the Sunday, so do they not? Do they have a third place game where the fellows get after? No, the, that's the difference. One? That is the only. That's the only difference because they have a the league below a split into north and south. So the winner of the north plays the winner of the south, mm. which the two teams could come up to the to our league. I think so. It's, it'll be a good game. It's a team from Scotland and a team from around London. Well, that'd be cool. That's yeah. cool if they have it where, like, if you win it, you move up like Germany does. That's cool. Yeah, but it's all finances over here, really. Mm-hmm. But I yeah. think the Scottish team from the north is, is going for the Grand Slam, like all four trophies, and the, and the team from uh, Streatham from down south are going for the treble. So it's actually quite a, yeah, it'd be a good game. Hopefully I get to watch the it. The treble, that's winning all three. Yeah. So well, you guys won... The regular season, you won the title. Uh, you won it. Yeah, yeah. What did you guys lose? Didn't you lose something? We lost the cup. We lost the cup. We went. Um, Was we that went after to... you had already won the league title? Because I saw something with you lifting a trophy no. and celebrating. They're like, "Look at this shed guy winning it," and then something about being down six nothing after the first leg or something. Um. I'm not sure about that, actually. Maybe. Maybe we won it, but we didn't lift the trophy till a couple of weeks later. Yeah, that was it. We won it in Telford, and then we didn't actually lift the trophy for another, like, two weeks. And then I, it, within we, that time, or at some time, point, we, we lost. the cup final, yeah. Right. So it was a final, or it was a two legs, because I heard you lost the first. Two legs. Yeah, that's yeah, a we weird lost, system, we lost, eh? <laughs> we lost the – we lost – I actually don't mind that, because – Although I do like the like elite league like uh, one off game fifty fifty fans, but um, they have to do that on a weekend because everyone's kind of working, you know. In this yeah. league, everyone works got got their own jobs, and obviously it's very fan dependent. So if guys, if teams get an extra home game, it's great for revenue, mm-hmm. and it might mean it could be a difference in in this league. So, um, but we went into Peterborough and we got beat six nothing. It wasn't. Yeah, it's pretty. It wasn't a good they, night. They, they, no, they play well. Um, but then it was we. It's as silly as it sounds. We we didn't think we were out of the game. You know, like because we we have been uh, scoring probably minimum five six <laughs> yeah. most games this week. It sounds so stupid because I don't want to be cocky, but um, we were we were quietly quite confident, and we, we think we did get it to like six one with like 30, 40 seconds left. So it was. And then they scored an empty net late on five, six, ten seconds left or something. So we we made a good effort in the second leg, but yeah, we lost it in that first leg basically, and they and they deserved it over two legs. Um, yeah, it's interesting how I f- like know what's going on because you came to the sheds and your your fans keep me up to date. I think it's cool because I wouldn't have known what was going on in Leeds. I wouldn't have known the big blue tent. I knew the big blue tent went to Leeds, but I didn't put it together that years later that's where chocolate's flying out. And that's the big blue tent. And that's where you're playing and running amok. And I think it's really neat. And it makes the world feel really small when people let me know what's going on and that shed guys are yeah. succeeding. I love seeing shed guys win. <laughs> so yeah, you won the league focus. title. Do you guys get after it then that night? Yeah, we went, we went out. Uh, not until we got lifted the trophy. We lifted the trophy at home on like a, on a so you guys must've been sun. ahead by quite a bit. Cause there was weeks left in the season, right? Yeah, I think we won by like ten points or something in the end. Comfortable. But we played. Yeah, we played the second place. We 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 had Milton Keynes twice on the last weekend of the year, so that was our kind of aim was to win it before that weekend because you know you never know. Right. We didn't we didn't want to risk like taking it to that weekend because 
they're a good team. Yeah, you wouldn't want so, to yeah, up to I that. Think they, yeah, they <laughs> they dropped a few points, and, and we hope, thankfully, we we carry on winning. So it's very it. it's interesting winning a league, right? Because most hockey is you're beating a team in the final game and whoever wins that game wins the trophy and lifts it in front of the other team. The one team goes off with their tail between their legs. The other team celebrates. And like when you win the league, you could be playing say the seventh or eighth place team who really knew they were out of it for months. And then they see you win the trophy and it's kind of different than like, yeah. you know? <clears throat> yeah. Well, we won it in Telford and, and, and they finished, I think they actually finished seventh in the end. Yeah, they must have done because they played, they played Milton Keynes. So, yeah, so it was, and it was, it was good. And we, we had to, it was like a three points we needed or something, but then Milton Keynes lost that day. So we won. So it was like a three points. And then you find so, out yeah, that you won. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Like, oh, by the way, Milton Keynes lost. So <laughs> you guys can celebrate. <laughs> yeah. Time to get after it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, that, oh, yeah. That's funny. <laughs> so, what did you guys do that night then? Uh, one of the guys who works closely with with the team has a has like a bar, like a cafe bar slash thing. It's, uh, so we all it kind of just closed it. Had like a had like a lock in mm-hmm. for us really, and and wives and girlfriends and stuff. So it was quite nice. It's quite just, nice just, just the crew, just, just just the family, eh? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> just the family. Yeah. No kids. No kids. <laughs> no kids. That wasn't a kid friendly party. <laughs> yeah. Championships, uh, it's kid friendly for maybe an hour or two, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Get your pictures on the ice and then, and then you know what I wish to... I had was the year I just thought of this talking about this and how kid being kid friendly parties was our year end party in Cardiff. So we win the challenge cup my first year, but then we did lose the first round of the playoffs to Belfast. We didn't go to the, I never did play in the playoffs weekend, but we had our team party in the big blue tent um, locker room. And I brought my son Colby, who was like two or three to that party. And um, he was playing beer pong and, um, (laughs) and uh, like, he really got to find out what hockey was all about that day. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> that's, that's why that's why he wanted to be a hockey player after that okay? oh yeah if you see people having that much fun at a year at party then you want to be a hockey player and you'll do any, whatever it takes to do that <laughs> yeah. uh but it was probably not kid appropriate after an hour or two right <laughs> no, as long as you were drinking the beer he was losing on the beer pong that's the main thing yeah. Uh, but no, that that's see it, and you have your kids, right? And you're playing with all those mm-hmm. young guys. I, when I went to Cardiff, and I'm the only guy with a kid, and the way the other guys on the team like brought him into it, and he was part of the family, yeah. and he was in the locker room after yeah. games. Like it meant a lot to me as a dad and a teammate, you know? Yeah, yeah. Well, when I was in Glasgow, a lot it was we were surrounded by a lot of kids. Actually, it's quite nice like that. But obviously, moves moving to Leeds. There's it was me and the coach who've got kids, nobody else. And obviously all three. Who's your coach? Uh Ryan Aldridge is called. He's he's from um Swindon, kind of area. Okay. Yeah, two seconds, yeah. Yeah, no problem. I will keep it going here with all my notes, right? <laughs> um, he's, uh, I think we've done a, pretty well for not having any notes today. Uh, I hold this yeah. just to keep myself safe, but there's actually nothing on it. <laughs> the comfort. Comfort blanket. Yeah. <laughs> like I know, like if I have nothing to say, I'll just look at this and something will come to me. But I got nothing. <laughs> uh, so he's got no, kids I, and you I got kids, uh, but you're yeah. a couple hours away or three hours away, so they probably don't come watch you all that much. But it is neat getting to play hockey in front of your children, and um, it's cool when they get of the age where they may actually remember it because. My kids think of me as a Ripley Wolf from around here in Senior A. They don't think of me as like a professional. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, um, my eldest is six now, so she she um, she she knows what's going on, and she's she's kind of like cool. an cook. Yeah, she's kind of um, got to be cool that her dad scored over forty goals a year. Too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, I, it's actually nice for her to see me like scoring and stuff instead of just penalty killing and blocking shots, trying to block shots. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, but actually seeing that, um, 
when I went back during the pandemic, she was she would have been I think she was close to three, just at around three at my testimonial. So after the pandemic, when we went back with Glasgow, she didn't remember like a single thing from the game. So yeah, so it's sad, isn't three, it? Three to five or whatever. She she obviously forgot everything. So mm-hmm. it's quite nice that she's old enough to kind of take it all in and um, appreciate what's going on. My youngest is just she just loves it, loves the atmosphere. Like she just absolutely loves it. She's yeah. actually ripping around just now with a hockey stick in her hand. <laughs> that that's nice to hear because um it's been a wild ride for me this season is uh for years my daughter always said you know she hated hockey she hated hockey i don't know if that's just because her brother was so into it and so was i and yeah. she's being different but then she shocks the world uh two years ago and says i want to play hockey this season i'm like what really and then she does the like tight year where that's just like not a team and it's just working on your skills and she wasn't really into it she she would go um wasn't that excited to be there or anything but then this year i got to coach her we were a team we had a team of girls we had a hoot we became a family um it was one of my favorite years of hockey and now the other day she asked me to play mini hockey with her (laughs) and I like almost cried. I was like, that's so you, you like, like hockey. And then she confirmed she's playing again next year. And then later that same day that she asked to play mini hockey with me and her brother, which was the coolest thing ever. She then (laughs) went out and played road hockey. (laughs) Wow. Right. That's when you know it. Yeah. That's when it makes it all worth it. Yeah. Uh, it was a great year, and I'm I'm really thankful because I knew she was just messing with me. She'd keep saying she wasn't playing hockey, she wasn't playing hockey next year. When I knew she'd go to the rink and have, I'd see her have more fun than she had doing anything else. And yeah. hockey isn't about playing the hockey; it's about all the other no. hockey. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Playing hockey is actually the least important part of hockey. Yeah, it's it's it is <laughs> especially actually, at that age. To get to do all the other hockey, you have to actually play hockey, right? Yeah. That's the only downside of hockey is you have yeah. to actually play it. Yeah, where guys like <laughs> slash you and punch you. It's yeah, like yeah, yeah. now, like well, when I just come out to the shed, I'm getting all the hockey I need and I don't even have to play the hockey. <laughs> yeah, you found it. You found a good niche there, actually. I have found the honey hole. <laughs> it makes you happy, it makes you smile and laugh, and it's fun as fun, <laughs> right? Uh, you know um that four thousand and counting guy i gotta give him Mm -hmm. some props i've i heard so he went and got himself he was trying to get himself a sponsor to go to the finals weekend where he'd get it paid for which is cool good idea buddy um and he was saying like i'm gonna interview this many people if i can get to playoff weekend and have a sponsor and i heard that fellow's just running amok he he interviewed seven guys in two days and he was ranked number one. So sometimes you do just have to work outwork the competition. That's pretty <laughs> cool, right? Yeah, I think that's a it's a good little podcast they've got on there. Actually, I was talking to him. He tried getting me on to talk about the Coventry weekend there, but I was in I had uni and, and stuff. I couldn't make it. Um, uh, but he's he's he played in the league that I was in. The, yeah, uh, Nicky and I played. His brother played with me in Glasgow. Um, and they're a good couple of guys and he's obviously got a lot of contacts around there in that and, league and so around your league right but like i just yeah, like yeah. the competitive spirit that like um yeah that he's he, like i i get so invested in each chat that like i i do get tired after and then i like i gotta get, be <laughs> fresh for the next one but like i just like this so much i could do i could do seven in two days easy if i had time <laughs> yeah well you gotta plan it yeah but he's yeah well you both you both hustled and you've got a lot of interviews out and I think obviously the content 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 for him right now is is around based around this weekend, these two weekends. Yeah, no, it's um, an getting, exciting getting, time in hockey. There's a lot going on yeah, in hockey right now. Yeah, getting previews around like player player previews is is pretty important. Like you know, like getting players yeah. takes on. Stuff Why do you think I wanted to get they... you on before the weekend? I want a shed boost, you know. <laughs> <laughs> well, maybe you picked the wrong guy, but no, I didn't. Maybe you had a hundred. Got... You had a hundred and. 44 point 154 points this year <laughs> maybe should have gone maybe should have got bouncy he's, he's more reliable than me <laughs> actually the cardiff devils are going for their fourth playoffs in a row right 
Yeah, so last weekend, obviously, beating Coventry wasn't easy. I know Coventry have been good this year, but I think mm-hmm. Boundsby was pretty lights out, what, what I saw. Well, I it's, it, it is interesting when I asked for chocolate to get thrown on the ice right in Cardiff after they booked their ticket to Nottingham is they end up losing the second leg. And it's funny because they've won the series, but they lost that game and that they threw chocolate on the ice warms my heart. But it's funny that like they won, but they lost. <laughs> yeah, we're, it's, we're, we're, we're kind of used to that. you know. Only like, in the UK. Yeah, yeah. It's very, it's very you football. know what I don't understand, though, is if mm-hmm. this is hockey and if the score is, say, five to one to start the game, why are we starting with the scoreboard saying zero zero? We all need to know. So if say there's someone showing up and it's their first game of hockey and the team's winning three to one and they pull their goalie, they're going to be so confused as to why that just happened. Why don't we just start the game with what the scoreboard should be? Just put it up five one and let's start. Sixty minutes left. I think I think we did that once in class. I think they should do that. We uh, may as well all be on the out. same page instead of doing math in our head. <laughs> I think we played. I think we played Dundee, and we were down by one going into the home leg, and we put it as Dundee. Like the first score was one 0 Dundee. Just to and let everybody know, that's how, that, well, it would make more sense, right? Because that if that's yeah. what it is, and then we all need to know when it's time to pull the goalie and stuff. It would make no sense. It's like yeah. Coventry pulling their goalie in Cardiff. And I bet you the scoreboard said they're winning two to one. And it's like, well, this, yeah, if yeah. you're a, if you're a first time watcher, you don't understand what they're doing. <laughs> That's a weird strategy. <laughs> the chances are first time watchers won't go and watch that game though. You know, Not, no, I know it's the... just, it's just different. <laughs> That's all. Yeah. <laughs> Still a best they, of the three uh... type of a guy. Yeah, I mean, I think that would be the ideal scenario for both leagues, but um, it's it's all about ice time over here, you know. Like, yeah. And that weekend is a good spectacle, both in the Elite League and Coventry. A lot of fans do look forward to that. I think you it's know, really neat, too. The Nottingham weekend, when I went as a pregame speaker, it's so, it's so cool when you get all the different teams' jerseys <laughs> in one bar. <laughs> I uh, I got They gave me a hotel and everything just as a pregame speaker. <laughs> <laughs> And then we lost yeah, to Coventry like six nothing in the first game of the semis. And then they told the guys oh. they weren't allowed to drink before the third place game because they sucked so bad. So then just Dees and I went out and ran amok that night. <laughs> the non players were allowed to do whatever they wanted, especially the ones that were officially retired. <laughs> so funny. I'm pretty sure when the weekend we got there for the class goal, I'm pretty sure Frankie retired just before that, just before the third and fourth game. Pretty sure he walked in the rink and said, "No, nah, I'm done. <laughs> that's me." <done. laughs> um, I'll have to clarify that, but I'm pretty sure that's what happened. He told me that it was. He actually told me it was because Finner took away beers in the room at the end of that season. And probably, probably. I, I think it's neat that Finner's like part of my Manchester Storm season, where I kind of felt like. I, I, I hate getting invested in teams when I have no control over the outcome of the game other than trying to give shed boost. But like when they were playing Sheffield there last weekend, I was so into it when they were, when I was like trying to shed boost Critch the night before the game. And then he goes out and scores and they tie it up and then they're heading to Sheffield. Like I was so into it. I had to keep myself busy that whole day because I wanted them to win so bad. <laughs> I played with all those guys, most of those guys in in that COVID tournament sort of thing. They were like Critch and and Simmons and stuff. He's he's they're, they're a good bunch of guys in Manchester too. They are a good bunch of guys. So okay, mm-hmm. here's well, let's get some rumors started then. Obviously, you've had a great year. You're only 32, um, and you have shed guys vouching for you, um, and trying to go through me to be your agent. <laughs> um, but what are your aspirations now? Like, I know you got the family and all, but do you want to get back to the elite league? Do you want to go to Manchester and be part of the chocolate? Cause I know you'd fit in with those guys. <laughs> what do you want no, to do? I think, I, th- I think, I think elite league days are uh, probably done for me. Um, I'm quite enjoying the role I've got right now. Is, is It's more fun having that role, isn't it? It's more fun, but it's also I'm working with I'm working with a lot of young guys, you know, that's like it's a first year pro. Um, they've only ever played like junior hockey or maybe 
some school in America or something that they've gone over and don't know. Quite a few of our guys were at the OHA thing, which is just like a school kind of program they set up over here for a few years. I think Pete Russell, the, the national coach, was, was involved in that too. Um, so it, I don't know. I'm quite enjoying I'm not teaching them the ropes, but like, yeah, teaching them how teaching them teaching them how to be a shed guy, teaching them how to hockey. Yeah, pretty mm-hmm. much. Sounds like yeah. they got the right mix and leads though to do that. Having a guy like you showing the young punks what's up because, um, yeah, I haven't heard anything bad about you yet. <laughs> well, I, I don't know. I feel like a bit of a granddad on that team sometimes. So they, some of the stuff they talk about, I don't. I, it's lost on me sometimes. Like <laughs> Fortnite and stuff, probably. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Pokemon and all that stuff. <laughs> um, he, I, yeah, but listen, they're they're a good bunch of guys in that in that league. They've they've got they've got something that you can't really teach. You know, like they've got that special something where the hockey sense and I mean, you know, you know what I'm talking about. You either oh, have yeah. it or you kind of don't. Yeah, yeah. But and that all... Shudra and that Kieran Brown probably got it. Yeah, Max. Listen, like even the two inputs, we've, the three inputs we've had over the season, they've all been great um, for that group. It's an easy group to get involved in because they're, I think the, the main success for Leeds is there's that core group that have all grown up together. There's about six or seven of them that are local and guys. They all know each other. Yeah. 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 Like the Elmira Sugar Kings. <laughs> yeah, that's it's huge. That is huge. Um, it is huge. Especially, especially when like everyone else younger guys like look up to you and if you obviously add some experience with me and sammy and and, and things like that it goes a long way you know and sounds like you got a good mix with, we do and we've got a very good goalie too he's yeah he, uh, he's got elite league experience but he should be um in my opinion should be making that gb national team as well Who, who's Even that it's just as a big sam gospel he's called oh yeah i've heard of him yeah, I, I don't know if he was. Do you remember that time that wasn't he in uh, was he in Nottingham or Sheffield? He was in Nottingham, but he yeah. played for Sheffield for that one quarter final. Remember when they came back from like four nothing down or something? Sheffield, I think like he played for Sheffield randomly, and he beat Nottingham in Nottingham <laughs> like five four or something. Yeah, another aggregate tale. It, it's it's got to be very hard for a British goaltender to, <clears throat> for one, get to the elite league, but then to actually get to show what they can do. That's that. Well, that's that was a big thing with Bouncy. Yeah, I know. I remember talking to Ben. I've known Ben obviously since we were six, seven years old. And I thought he was very smart of Ben because he was he could have stepped up earlier to a bet to a to a good team in the elite league. Uh, but he held off. Had three, four good years in the in our league just now. Where it used to be called the EPL, and then he went to Hull, which is obviously a team where he where he would have played. Yeah, and he did play. And it was a huge, and it was a huge advantage for Hull because then they got an extra import. Skater. Yeah, yeah. And then obviously, I, I, I don't know. I think, I think he was in Hull for two years, was he? And then he obviously moved to Cardiff. And, yeah, and I remember when he family. moved to Cardiff was that they he signed the contract with uh, this. I don't know if I'm allowed to tell this, but I'm gonna because it's my share and I can say what I want. Um, he had signed with the previous owner. He had signed with the old organization, uh-huh. and then when Todd sure. and everybody took over. And it's like, well, it's really actually up to them if they're going to have a British goalie or if they're going to bring in an import like most teams do. And they honored his contract and said, they signed you. You have a contract with this team. You're going to be our goalie. And to see the that they're the good people that let him have his opportunity. And then to see what he's done with it, um, becoming an import in, in other leagues, being the guy for Team GB, winning all of the trophies for Cardiff. Like, it's, it's a pretty neat situation because... If though if Todd comes in and says I want to I want a different goalie I want an import and that contract's done like that his whole career would be different. Well, especially back then when the import numbers were lower as well, I feel like it was such a huge advantage to have that British goalie. I remember Belfast had Murph as well. You remember? And oh yeah, it's just just it's such a big advantage. It was such a big advantage. Maybe not so much now with it being. It is interesting how everybody's got two goalies that like split time now, right? I think one. I think one of the teams did it one year, and it was such an advantage. Like, especially if, if your team's got a lot of travel, you know. I think it was Guildford. They did it. Like they would come up to us for the goalie, and then our goalie would do the travel down to them. And uh, yeah, well, it's interesting because if I was a goalie, I'd want that net to be mine every time. You know, it's like 
Matt Caruth and Herning right now, I think he didn't play one game of the year. <laughs> really? And they're, yeah. And they're going to the finals folks. They just won game seven. So go Herning blue foxes. <laughs> and thanks for the gold helmet. That's behind me. Won that in game seven against you guys. <laughs> um, well, I, I don't know what else I got. Cause I got nothing on my notes, but um it's it you know what's fun for me is waking up and not knowing what a day may bring. Um I knew I'm gonna talk to Hoth tonight and have fun. Um, but that I had every all my ducks in a row with work and I had an hour and that I write to you and I say, Hey man, we've tried to do this. Do you got time? And and you said, yeah. Let's do it. And like that out of nowhere, this could happen and we could have this much fun. It just makes my day. <laughs> yeah, it was good. I enjoyed it. Um, so I guess maybe I can do this without notes, just need a shed guy on the other side, right? exactly it's all about the company (laughs) that's right uh well it's great seeing you again and thank you leeds knights fans for keeping me up to date with what's going on there and i do hope you guys confirm that the chocolate is because of our original shed trip right and that's why it's happening in leeds because that'd be really cool to put that feather in my cap right and i hope it gets carried away you know run amok (laughs) chocolate everywhere (laughs) yeah (laughs) right and in the nihl go leeds knights right yeah, big weekend. And this has been another episode of Zero Ales and Hockey Tales with Woody and Wally. <laughs>